What is up you guys? So today I'm going to be showing you guys of everything you need and how to do a G35 to G37 front end conversion. Here we're going to be doing a bag install on his car. A JD. <laughs> we got JD in the vlog. G's on top of G's on top of G's. Okay, so if you guys want to check out how we do the install on George's G37, go to his channel and you guys will see. Now I'm, st I'm still not done, but because the fenders still need to be bonded and primered and that's getting, that's going to be happening today. So that's why I'm making this video because I'm taking the fenders off today and we're going to be taking them to um, my friend Abraham, who's going to prep them and get them smoothed out and ready for wrap. So nonetheless, let's get started with, I would say, the most obvious parts that you need. Uh, you need the hood, bumper, headlights, and the fenders. Now, when you do the fenders, if you want to make it, uh, put them on a G35, you obviously need the back end of the G35 fender to align with the door and the A-pillar. So, I could have done the smooth um, finish. But I wanted to do, you know, a little more extra since I was already going all out with how it is right now. So I had decided to make the vents and all that. So that made it a little bit more complicated than what it could have been or should have been. So if you're not looking to do vents, obviously just cut the back end of the G37 fender and just kind of smooth it out and weld it together, mold it and all that. And then you guys should have your fenders nice and easy preferably have a body shop do it or a professional do it don't be like me and spend an entire month making fenders for this car i'm pretty sure a shop if they're really dedicated could get it done over a weekend now fenders usually go anywhere between 200 to 400 per set depending how damaged they are honestly you really don't need that back end of the g37 fender so uh, if you guys buy, buy uh, some damaged fenders that are fine from the front right here, you know, then you're fine. Everything else back in down here and all that won't matter because, you know, you need the G35 fenders for that. As for the G35 fenders, you could either use your own or do what I did and traded them plus cash for some damaged ones. Uh, both of these fenders are the G35 ones that I bought or I didn't really buy. I traded plus cash for damaged ones so they were all messed up from the front end and but they were perfectly fine from the back end so that's what i did so you know i bought the g37 fenders for 400 bucks minus the 100 bucks that i got for each fender of the g35 ones i ended up getting um spending 200 bucks for fenders now hood you could either do an oem hood or get an aftermarket hood um shout out to Corey who hooked me up with um this vented hood carbon fiber hood uh i'll put the link in the description in the bottom to his website where you can get it um they go for about 700 bucks for this one it's the ams hood and yeah honestly i like it way better because it looks more aggressive so about 700 bucks for the hood aftermarket i mean oem ones oem ones should go for a little bit cheaper and of course you guys can see that we have the IPL bumper. This is an OEM IPL bumper that I bought from Low Tech for $800. So obviously majority of you people know how much these OEM bumpers go for. They're pretty expensive. So the first bumper that I bought was the Liberty Walk one and Sam from Strictly Motorsports hooked me up with that one. It was a VIS bumper, but since it was fiberglass and I'm static, um, I didn't want to risk breaking it on me. So. I ended up getting um, getting this bumper instead since it's uh, plastic, you know, and if it scrapes, it's just going to scuff up instead of breaking into pieces like the fiberglass one. So I ended up spending double the money on that. So I'm not going to say how much I got the the Liberty Walk bumper for, but they're on VIS. 
website they're about 600 bucks but message sam from strictly motorsports maybe he could hook you up with a way better price and next we have the headlights it's, these are the alpha rex um headlights so they're not the normal amazon gtr ones these are fully built led bulbs in them for the low beams high beams turn signals the thunderbolt gtr thing so everything is fully led you don't have to replace any bulbs that's just how they come now these are a little more expensive but they are definitely worth it the light output is amazing and compared to the little cheaper amazon ones um you need to pass over your hids your blast and all that and yeah it's just like too much of a hassle for a uh, bad quality headlight that looks similar to this one so this is the higher quality one no moisture gets in it nothing so definitely recommend these if you guys are looking to do this unless you guys are trying to get actual oem headlights now i now i did get a partial sponsor with them so i got these headlights for a little bit cheaper but i'll leave the link in, in the description below on these headlights so the bumper did come with these grills the little bumper grills but you know come with that grill so i ended up buying that grill for a hundred dollars uh from one one low vq so now that we got all the exterior stuff out of the way let's move on into the actual so um radiator support and everything that you need on the inside to hold all this together okay guys so this is how it looks like and as you guys could tell the g35 radiator support bolts up to right there and right there and then you have that whole fiberglass piece but the g37s are built differently so this is uh everything that you're gonna need so right now i'm gonna take the front bumper off and i'll show you guys from the inside before i end up removing everything i did want to mention that my cable latch does work so you guys will also need this i'll get to it in a little bit but since i don't have that plastic thing the spring that's supposed to bolt up right here um has nothing to sit on so unless until i trim that plastic piece up this piece is what i'm talking about until i trim this up more up up here and have it sit perfectly how i need it to be um i can't put the spring right here because i mean it's not gonna bolt it's not gonna sit on anything but once this is properly trimmed and sitting nice um oh, when i pull the latch it should pop the hood up just not like any normal car seven radiator cover so i bought this for about 60 bucks on uh, i think uh, carparts.com or something like that so i got to me within three days less than three days and yeah nice and that piece if you don't want this big empty space right here in the middle okay so right now i'm gonna take off the bumper and i'm gonna take off the fenders and show you guys everything that you need from the inside since I'm about to take off the bumper, I have a 10 millimeter bolt right here. But if you guys see this little gap right here, it's because I don't have the plastics that go on the fender where the bumper clips onto. I just got them not too long ago, but I haven't had a chance to install them. So you're also gonna need that. I'll show you what plastics I need in a little bit, right? I was gonna put them on, but since the fenders are gonna get uh, bondo work done, um, I didn't bother putting them on, so I'll show you guys which ones I mean. Are the plastic pieces that I mean where the bumper will clip onto. So they go, they bolt up somewhere right there on the fender, and then the bumper will just clip this in onto the top part of it. So you will need these as well. If you're lucky enough, maybe when you buy your fenders, they'll come with this. So keep a lookout for this. You know, it's just an extra part that it, you'll be lucky to have without having to actually pay extra for so yeah these will come in handy if you're using a oem bumper if you're using the fiberglass vis bumper like the old bumper i had you won't need them because it doesn't bolt up to it all right so now that we got all this exterior stuff out of the way here is how the car looks without any of that stuff completely bare bone all right, so let's dive right into it and get to the most obvious part that you need to change. So obviously, uh, the G35 radiator support is one big piece that goes from that end to this end. So you need to remove all that out of the way. And when you do that, you will have your radiator and your AC and everything that's right here 
hanging and it'll yeah you, it'll just be hanging so i say prop it up with something so uh you don't put any stress on the on the bands on the top and the bottom one so do that put prop it up somehow so it stays straight okay so you're gonna need the g37 radiator support so which is that you're gonna need the radiator support radiator support brackets which are these you're gonna need the hood latches which are those you're gonna need the cables to help open you're gonna need these brackets this bracket and this bracket because this is where the fender bolts up to right here you're also gonna need the g37 hood hinges so these are not gonna bolt up to where the G35 ones are because they're so much larger than the G35 ones. I already sold the G35 ones, so I don't even have those to show you guys a comparison, but the G35 ones are up to like right here, whereas this one sticks out all the way out here. Also, you're gonna have to, I use self taps on mine. And I, I wanted to do a drop rivets and all that, but it's, so, it's hollow in here. So there's nothing really to like hold them onto. And um, yeah, I thought it was just best. It was like easiest. And I mean, it holds on, it doesn't move or anything. So uh, it worked perfectly fine. But I'll get back to um, talking about how you measure these out to, to know where to um, bolt them onto in a bit. So we're gonna get to this part first. First off, um, Bolt these up right here in the last bolt. You know, as you tighten it up, it's gonna grab onto this one and it doesn't even move. Same on the other side, it doesn't even move. Now the G37 radiator support, um, it has a plastic part that goes across right here. And in the middle, you have, um, these uh well it's all it's all plastic in the middle i'll show you guys in the picture right here so i cut off the entire midsection and the top section that goes across because the g35 radiator is bigger than the g37 one just because of the fact that the g35 one has this whole top thing and in the g37 it has it pushed more up front to the somewhere around here and it's not part of the, the radiator. Cut this whole midsection off, the top section off. You're gonna have to make this cut right here. As you guys can tell, I, I went a little too far down, but it's fine. It gave me a little more play so I could actually fit the radiator in. But you're gonna have to cut this section off if you wanna keep your AC. If you guys don't have AC, then by all means, leave it be. You know, you get, probably don't even have these lines anymore. But if you do have AC and you still want to keep having AC, you're going to have to cut this midsection off. Or not this midsection. You're going to have to cut this part off so you could run your lines straight and the radiator support will just slide straight through like that. So once you cut all that midsection and the top section off, you're going to have to measure out where the radiator is going to mount up to and you're going to have to drill new holes so the radiator could sit on the radiator support as you've done this you've done your holes you sit your radiator on top um you're gonna have to figure out where to have this rest of the things bolt up to um ignore these zip sides these are the ones i use for to hold my bumper but i basically bolted these three things yeah one two three onto this bolt right here that connects to this cylinder down here i zip tied these hoses right there and where else right here and that holds this up pretty well so i don't have to worry about it at all so after doing that you bolt up your brackets you bolt up your hood latches you bolt up these brackets. Um, once you have that done, yeah, and you have your hood, 
make sure your hood has these hooks and you make sure it lines in right here and right make sure your hinges are bolted on as well so when you close this let me grab this real quick so when you close the hood you should be able to hear the latch the hood's gonna basically center itself the way it has to be and you'll be able to see where the hinges are gonna be so you just self tap them in or rivet them in whichever you want to do um, it will work either way so once that's in that basically aligns your hood dead in the center after getting all that done so once you have all that done and you have the hood centered it basically makes everything a lot easier you'll know where the fenders go you you'll know where the headlights go because honestly you don't even really need this piece that sticks out you just need you can cut it from right here i did that on this side so you know it's cut because the headlight bolts up to right here and then on the top somewhere up here and then onto the fender and that's it um so i might end up cutting this piece off too as well just because and yeah after you do that it helps align everything so much better but honestly i mean that's that's all it is to it to get the g37 front end conversion done so it's not that complicated it's pretty simple like i said before the only hard part is the only hard part is um molding the fenders together with the g35 fenders so it lines up with the eight pillar in the door so if you were guys to were to do this in order you guys have to put the radiator support first then you put these brackets these brackets the latches the cables which you run into this little hole right here so you pull out the old g30 g35 one and you can run it in there and you'll be able to open your hood normally like oem and then you put these brackets you bolt them up you can't see the other bolt that's in here but it bolts up with these two bolts and then yeah after that um you put your fenders back on once you've molded them back to get molded them together you put them on on you put the headlights on you put your bumper on and like i said you can use that plastic trim piece to help support it but yeah that's basically all you need to do a g30 seven front end conversion it's pretty simple it's just like for me it took a lot longer because i only got to work on it on the weekends and plus there was i guessing i'm the first one to actually do this with instructions and you know doing a showing you guys how to do it so for anyone else that wants to do this it should be pretty simple i mean if anyone were to actually bring me the stuff and bring me all the parts i'd probably be able to get this done within a day or two so also order the new wrap. So wrap is gonna be coming this week. The new uh, carbon steering wheel is gonna be coming on Monday. Fenders are gonna be done this upcoming week as well. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap the fenders and the bumper first, like I said, so we can get a good photo shoot in. And yeah, I'm gonna debut the car at Slammed Enough February 9th. So it's gonna be in Ontario, the Ontario uh, Convention Center. So come check it out i'll be there all day so below below on the description i'll leave a, a list of everything that it is that you need for the car so you guys could copy and paste that or take a picture or screenshot it whatever it is you guys do to have that list so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it really informative and you know it gives uh give you guidelines of what you need to do to make this front end conversion thank you guys for always supporting the channel don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video